Hey guys, so this week we're gonna be taking a look at the Urban eSkateboard V2. And I'm particularly excited about this review just because it's a little bit different than what I typically look at. And I've been dying to check out electric skateboards for a long time, but I'd always been hesitant to kind of buy one just because of the high cost and the large size. But recently after a lot of research, I came across the Urban eSkateboard V2. So I went ahead and reached out to the company to see if they'd be interested in having me feature one of the boards on the channel for review. And they were kind enough to provide one at a discounted rate so I could check it out. And I've been using this for the past month or so and so far it's been very cool. I haven't run into any issues and I've been very impressed with both the portability and the performance that the board offers, especially at this diminutive size. And so I've had a lot of fun testing this out and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. I think it's gonna be a great option for anybody who's also curious about electric skateboards but doesn't really wanna spend that much money or want something a little bit smaller. And so let's just go ahead and dive in and take a closer look at the Urban eSkateboard V2. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the size, which is what really caught my eye about this board when I first saw it. The board is about 17 inches, which is even smaller than the penny boards that I typically like to ride in the past. And so here you can see a size comparison of this next to the penny board that I've been using the most recently. And so this size has been really fantastic for making it very portable, easy to throw into a backpack or to attach on the outside of a backpack using compression straps. This is what really made me feel like this would be an appropriate board for both travel and EDC use. And on top of the small size, the board is also very lightweight. It comes in at about seven pounds, which makes it very easy to just carry in one hand. As you saw in the intro to the video, I was holding it up and I didn't feel any sort of fatigue. And so that's really what made me feel like this would be a great item to maybe travel with. On top of the fact that it's small and light, it also has a 52.8 watt hour battery, which has been FAA approved. I haven't actually tried to travel with this yet, but as you can see, the battery is really not that big. And so on the company side, it does say that it's approved. So I will be hoping to travel with this at some point in the future. I'll make sure to update with any issues that I may have run into. But in general, just because of the small size, I'm pretty confident that I wouldn't have any issues getting around with this, especially on domestic airlines. And when I first saw the small size and weight of the board, I was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't be able to hold somebody of my size. I'm about 5'11 and a half and I weigh close to 200 pounds. So with something this small, I was worried that I would either not be able to go or that I might even bend the board. But because of the Canadian maple used on the board, the company said that this can hold up to 250 pounds, which is crazy considering how small the board is. And so jumping into some of the more technical aspects of the board, as I mentioned, it has a 52.8 watt hour battery and it takes about an hour to charge it. Here on one side of the battery, you can see that it has a very simple charging port with a little cover that you can use to keep it protected while you're riding around. While we're on the charging port, I'll go ahead and show the board's charger, which is very small. I was very happy to see that it's no bigger than a regular laptop battery. This is about the same charger that I had on one of the netbooks I used in the past. So very easy to just toss into your bag. It weighs almost nothing. And it's great that the board can recharge to its fullest capacity in about an hour. So very easy to just ride this to a coffee shop or something, sit down to study, plug it in, and then you're ready to go by the time you leave. So. Nice to see the portability, not just of the board, but of the accessories. This definitely looks a lot smaller than the chargers I've seen on something like a boosted board. And so at its fullest capacity, the board is supposed to give you between seven to 10 miles of range. I think this varies very widely depending on your weight and how fast you're riding the board. There are three different speed modes, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a bit. Also, depending on if you're riding up inclines or going downhill. So I've seen kind of a big variance in the amount of distance I'm able to get out of the board. So I've typically been able to get between four and eight miles of travel out of the board, depending on the different surfaces and speeds that I'm using. So for me, that's more than enough. This isn't something that I'm using for longer distances like you would with something like one of the newer boosted boards. So it's plenty for what I need to just get to a coffee shop right around my neighborhood or go to the grocery store or something. Or even while traveling, this will be a nice thing to just be able to toss into a bag or into my car and just ride around whatever city I'm visiting. As far as the board's power, it has a 250 watt motor that which you can see here in this wheel. And so far I've been very impressed with just how zippy the board can be considering how heavy I am and considering its size. It's supposed to reach a top speed of about 15 miles per hour. And when I've been riding on a flat surface, I've definitely gotten close to that point. Obviously when I'm going uphill, it's much slower. And so now that we're talking about the speed of the board, I might as well go ahead and jump into the remote. This is the included remote that comes with the board. It's very lightweight and simple. I like that it has a little tether so that you can wrap it around your hand so you don't have to worry about it falling while you're riding. The remote is very straightforward. It has a micro USB port for charging, a simple power button on the bottom, and then it has three different speed modes that you can use, a low, a medium, and a high. I found that the low was very, very low. So if you're a super beginner, you've never ridden a skateboard in your life and you just want something very, very easy to kind of just start and inch your way into riding something like this, that's a good place to start. You can just flip the switch over 
it's very easy to tell which mode you're on but this does move very very slow even the medium was a little bit slow for what i personally like i've been riding skateboards for a while even if they haven't been electric so i, I am pretty comfortable so i spent most of my time here on the high mode and i thought that was more what most people that have ridden this sort of thing in the past are going to be using just because it's still not super speedy it's not going to be the super fast acceleration you'll find on some of the higher end boards that i've seen it's enough to just get me where i need to go and i feel like i'm moving at a decent speed and so using the board is very similar to what i've seen on other videos for different boards you can push forward on the little joystick here to accelerate and to brake you pull back the board also has the ability to go in reverse so you hit this switch and clicking on forward the board goes back so it takes a little bit of getting used to when you're using the board in reverse but it's still nice to have that versatility especially if you need to turn yourself around it's nice to be able to just maneuver a little bit easier going in both directions there's also a few battery indicators on the remote so if you're using this for a longer period of time you kind of see this start to go down and you have an idea of how much life you have left i also like that it's very easy to pair the remote with the board right out of the box as soon as i turned them both on it was ready to go so very simple very lightweight it's easy to throw this into your bag or into a pocket even and so showcasing the other side of the battery you can see that it just has a very simple on and off switch with a little LED indicator for your battery life. As far as the rest of the components on the board, the trucks feel really solid. They're easy to tighten and loosen depending on your preferences for riding. The board includes a tool to loosen and tighten them if you don't have one already. And then the wheels so far have done a great job. I've gone over some pretty heavy bumps and rocks and I haven't ever noticed them getting stuck or beat up. They still feel like they roll very easily nice high quality bearings used i'll need to figure out how to clean these a little bit as you can see they pick up some dirt so i'll have to take a look at maybe loosening them up and just making sure to keep this well maintained so i can keep using this over the longer term and so next up i just want to showcase some footage of me riding the board outdoors i tried to do my best kind of casey nice that impression while riding around and in general as I've mentioned a few times, it's been a great experience to ride. I was able to hit a consistent pace of between 10 to 15 miles per hour on the high mode, especially riding on just flatter surfaces. As I was riding this downhill, you definitely picked up a lot more speed, but it was still very easy to maneuver the board. I was concerned that because of the size of the board, it would be a little bit unstable. But because of my experience riding penny boards, I didn't really struggle. And I think that if you don't go too, too fast, you shouldn't have to worry about running into too many issues with steering the board. I also have a pretty large foot. I'm an 11 and a half shoe, as you may have seen in some of my other videos. So one of my feet almost takes up a large portion of the board when it's horizontal. So for kicking off, it can be a little bit weird. But when I'm riding the board normally, I still feel plenty of stability just steering around corners. I feel like I'm able to make fairly tight turns. And I found the remote to be pretty responsive. One thing that I did notice is that the braking can be a little bit delayed. So if you're in a high traffic area, you do wanna be aware that you don't wanna be approaching corners or stops very fast because it sometimes takes a little while to stop so as you can see in the footage even when i'm not going that fast and i hold the brake completely down i still continue my forward motion for a fair amount of distance so it's good to either plan that out or even just jump off the board and grab it real quickly so it's definitely something to be aware of it's not going to be a super fast stop so you definitely want to be careful as you're riding this around so that you don't possibly accidentally roll into traffic or hit somebody or even lose the board. And then one thing to note, of course, I would assume this would be the case with most electric skateboards, is handling inclines is gonna be a little bit of a struggle for this board, even when it's in its highest speed mode. I found that it was just barely able to inch up inclines of 10 degrees or so. So as you can see in the footage, there's a big difference when I'm not on the board, it can just zoom up there very easily. But once you add the weight, just kind of going up starts to crawl, the board's battery starts to beep a little bit to indicate the power just running down. So that is gonna be a little bit of a struggle. If you live somewhere with a lot of inclines, it will have a pretty big impact on the performance of the board. Thankfully, where I'm at, there's not too many of those. But with all that being said, considering the price and the size of the board, I continue to be impressed with just how well it performs and how fun it's been to ride. And as mentioned a few times during the video, I definitely look forward to trying to travel with this in the future, given that it's FAA approved and just given how easy it is to throw into a larger backpack or something like a duffel bag. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Urban E Skateboard V2 over the past month or so. It's been a lot of fun to ride. I've been very impressed with the performance that I've gotten out of it. And at the price point that it comes in at, it's gonna be a great option for anybody who's curious about electric skateboards, but hesitant to invest a lot. And so you can purchase this on the company site for about $180. And I think that's a pretty reasonable price, especially after all the research I've done on different price points for different skateboards and ranges and whatnot. This seems to be a pretty good balance for the quality, range, and size that it offers. 
I've been fortunate to have been able to test this out for at least a month and so far I haven't run into any battery issues, the motor hasn't died on me, it's still charging great, which are some of the more common issues that I saw on Amazon reviews for similar products. And I'll definitely make sure to keep testing this out and post any updates that I notice as I continue to use the board over more months or even a year. And the company offers a one year limited warranty, so if you run into any issues, they should be able to help you out. And if you're interested in a board of this size and you like the brand, they do actually have their original board, the V1, which is going to be a little bit cheaper at about $150. It doesn't have the same power or range as this board, and it's going to be a little bit smaller. But I'd seen some great videos for the V1, and that seems like that might be a good option as well if you want to save a little bit of money. And so as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, this is just the first of a few reviews that I'm hoping to do for electric skateboards. The next one that we're going to be doing is the Spectra from Walnut Technology and I'm very excited to kind of see how that compares to this board. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from you guys on what you thought about this review and what you think about me kind of branching out into some additional items such as this. I'm always curious to find new and unique gadgets that haven't been covered by too many people and just try to experiment with them so that you can get a good idea of how well they're gonna work. Even though I'm by no means an expert tech reviewer, it's always a blast to kind of branch out a little bit. I've had a lot of fun in the past reviewing products like the Blue Pop Portable Bluetooth Speaker and Power Bank or even something like the Apple AirPods, even though they've got a lot of other reviews out there. I like to try to offer at least a little bit of a different perspective, so hopefully that's of value to you guys. And so I want to go ahead and thank the company again for providing the board for me at a discount. It's been an absolute blast to test out. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you guys so much.